Hello, welcome to another short film episode. Uh, this time I'm going to do things the reverse way that I always do, meaning I will give my impressions and I'll do the review first and then I'll show you the episode in, in which I go out and shoot the camera. The reason for that is if you see the episode before, you have a lot of questions regarding the pictures and why do they look like this? So I'd rather just answer those beforehand and then I'll show you what happens. So today is all about the Minolta X700. Let's go! The Minolta X700. I have a very special place in my heart for this camera because my dad gave a Minolta X700 to my sister and then my sister gave it to me and then it was the first camera that I ever used to shoot riots and protests and manifestations on the street. Then I got a Canon A1, but before that I was shooting with a Minolta X700. If you're starting to take pictures on film and you want to take pictures on the street and just have fun and you've been using SLRs or DSLRs for a long time, this is a really, really, really good transition tool for taking pictures and film and start using it. Um, because it's just like another SLR, it's super comfortable. If you're used to manual focus with your SLR, this is gonna be right on your ballpark. It's heavy, but it's not too heavy and it's not too light. It has some plastic components. It's not all made out of metal by any chance. So it feels sturdy, but it's not as heavy as a completely made out of metal camera. So it's, it's right on the verge of being comfortable to carry, but give you enough way to be precise and not have like a shaky camera because it's too light. Uh, for the last shoot film episodes, I've been using 50 millimeters for basically all the episodes. I use a 50 millimeter with the DF300. I use a 50 millimeter with the Minolta X300. I use a 50 millimeter with the FET4. So I decided, what the hell, man? I can't keep shooting 50 millimeters. It's gonna be just the 50 millimeter show. So I decided to buy a 28 2.8 to accompany the camera and just use it for the episode. The problem is uh, that this particular lens has a problem. This is a Hoya, a Hoya, Hoya, that's how I say, Hoya, Hoya, uh, 28 millimeter 2.8. And the problem is it has a really short focus from one meter to infinity. It's just this, see, this is one meter and this is infinity, right? But then from one meter, it's all the way here to 30 centimeters. So the big problem with this lens is if anything happens right on at one meter or a little bit closer, if it's a little bit closer, it's gonna be out of focus. So that's a big issue that I had with this lens. It's, I thought it was gonna be super comfortable because I'm used to my Leica 28 millimeter. Between distances, I can just scale focus or I can just use the, the, the my fingers like this and I can focus really fast. But with this lens, it takes so long to focus, at least for me, I'm not used to it. I just basically shoot only rangefinders. So when I grab a new SLR or a new lens for an SLR, I had to get accustomed to it and it takes some time for me to do it. And my fingers are not used to handling an SLR lens anymore. I feel they're too long and too clumsy. So it's it might be my mistake for sure. If you're taking pictures of things that are farther away from you than one meter, then you have no problems. But if in my case, I was taking pictures of, I tried to take pictures of things that are a little bit closer and I just failed miserably. So that's about the lens, but let's go back and talk about the camera for a second. I was relying completely on the light meter, meaning if the light meter told me that was the reading, I will blindly trust the light meter and just take the picture, which is something I normally don't do. I like to check with my phone and then like use both light meters and compare. But this time I decided, you know, just, to hell with it, I'm gonna shoot with light meter and I'm just gonna trust this guy no matter what. For some reason, it doesn't matter how much I pre-measure the light and when I adjust it and I take the picture, the pictures were always a little bit darker than they should. Not all of them, but, but a good deal of them. And the problem is, I was shooting with Vision 3 200T. And as I said on my review, the Vision 3 200T is a film that is not really good for pushing. If you underexpose it too much, you try to push it, there's gonna be a lot of noise. And in this case, there's a lot of red noise on the film, which means that all self-exposed pictures 
have this red tint. I tried to correct it, but most of the time I couldn't and it like the, the shadows are just all crushed. I remember when I was shooting back in Chile's camera, I didn't have that problem, but again, I was shooting black and white and when you shoot black and white, all these things are almost unnoticeable. You can sub-expose one or two stops and it, it really doesn't matter because when you scan them, you can just push it and it works perfectly. But with color, it's another story. Um, so now I'm noticing these limitations. I guess next time when I use this camera, I'll have to overexpose a little bit more. I guess it's just a miscommunication. I wasn't pleased with the lens and I was not, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I was not happy at all shooting this next episode. Um, which is basically the reason why I'm bringing only 35 millimeter cameras to Mexico and I'm trying to compose in this regular 35 millimeter format because I was I was getting too accustomed to the Hasselblad Expan format and I was not feeling at home with this regular format. So far this is a great is a great camera. I like it more than the DF300 and the X300 and the Fed4. Uh, I really like the Minolta X700, despite all the things that I've said, which might sound like I hate it, but I actually like this camera a lot. Um, so I cannot recommend this camera enough. It's a great, great, great camera. If you put a 50 millimeter in this guy, it's going to deliver amazing results for sure. Um, yeah, that's that's all I can say about this camera. The only problem is that it's much ex it's much more expensive. I mean, not much more. It doesn't cost a thousand pounds, but it's much more expensive than the DF300 or the X300. But if you can find one of these, and you're looking for an SLR, maybe this might be your next choice. Uh, I prefer this over the Canon A1, in in my humble opinion. I think it's much nicer and it works. I think it works better, but who knows? This is all subjective. Um, so yeah, that's all I have to say about the camera. I hope you enjoyed the episode that's coming right now. And if you have any questions, just drop it in the comment section and that's it. Thanks for watching and keep shooting guys. Hello guys, so today we are in London, actually we are in Notting Hill and I am going to be shooting the Minolta X700 and I'm going to be using it with a 28mm 2.8 and yeah, for this occasion I will be shooting with some uh, Vision 3 200T I mean this is a re-spooled cartridge so it doesn't really matter but I'm going to be using some Vision 3 uh, because it's it's a nice cloudy day and Vision 3 200T works really well on the cloudy situation. So that's what I'm going to do. And I hope you enjoyed and follow me and let's go. That was super weird.